So hello everyone, uh, my name is Dave Wilwaco. I am here to speak as a DP, a Director of Photography. And a little bit about myself, I am a senior here for the TFM department, the Theater, Film, and New Media. And as a senior, um, what I'm trying to do is really focus on just the aesthetics, and that's what we're going to learn today, which is the aesthetic language. I believe it's important to know your language as a cinematographer because there's so many times, you know, when you see something that's something that is like drawing your attention, but you don't know what it is, and it could either help you or uh, defeat the purpose when it comes to story. So building aesthetic language is very important. So I guess a little bit about myself. Uh, I started film in 2006. I was part of the San Diego Asian Film Festival, which is now the PAC Arts. Uh, I did a documentary, uh, I did a scholarship and internship with them. And then um, I guess a year ago, I got a film that went into the short film corner in Cannes in France. And then um, recently, I have been working on music videos. One, uh, the first music video I worked on has 150,000 views on YouTube, and uh, I just got nominated for the San Diego uh, Music Video Award uh, this this summer or this summer. So we're waiting if we're going to win or not. So I used the Red Epic. Uh, also, I've worked in um, sets in Hollywood. So um, we did a music video in a castle with the same music video that they did uh, with Katy Perry, uh, I Kissed a Girl. So, not me personally, but, <laughs> but in the music video. So, those are, those are the things uh, about me. I'm going to move forward. So, in this world that we have, there's so many things that will distract us, things that are really complicated. And the thing about art is you have to be able to break it down. You have to break it down into something that is simple. Because a lot of times we see objects and we have like these 3D shapes, but realistically you have to break it down into from a dot to a line, a box, you know, or a rectangle into a box. So things that we have to understand because when you see an image, it's actually a two-dimensional um, as a result. But we use uh, techniques in order to make things come to life into a 2D screen. And in order to do that, we have, you know, we have to imagine a shape as if we can see through it. So in this image is actually a drawing um, in the Renaissance period. And it's like we have to, um, you have to see an object where, where if you have relationship of what is behind it, what is in front of it, and what is in the middle. So I have an example here. So you have a, um, you have this guy who's in the foreground, and then you have this, uh, this lighthouse in the back. The relation between the two shows you what is in the foreground and the background, but also tells you how far things are you know, from an image. Without the relationship, you can't really see, see that. Now here is uh, an idea of how to show action, motion. So as you can see, everyone is facing um, behind, e or everyone's looking at each other's back in a forward motion, so it has a sort of perpetualism as continuing forward. So we have to use these tools in order to bring life to a photo. Even though it is a 2D image, you know, just the direction of their face, direction of their bodies can show that we have emotion in the, in the shot. So here, you know, we have to avoid you know, having an image that's flat. So in this image, you have you know, something that, is this guy wearing some sort of scarf? Is, the, is it part of the... Is it part of the curtains in the background? We don't know because the relationship is intertwined into one single point. We don't really realize what is in the background or foreground. So uh, here's something that um, a lot of painters use. You can look at the Mona Lisa. You can look at other paintings where you see the image. And no matter where you are in the room, it creates an illusion as if someone is watching you no matter where you are. So if you've ever wondered that, like why is there someone watching you, it's because you use the dominant's eye. The dominant eye is normally in the center. You have to frame it in the center where you see it so that um, the dominant eye is what's closer to the lens, to the camera. Painters did that because it, it shows that it's a presence that, you know, I'm here, you know, as a presence, 
and then you can't really mess with me because I'm watching you. So this is what they did uh, back in the day just to kind of show um, kind of a communication between the viewer and also the painting. And this is also a modern day film where they do the same. So now here's what's important. A lot of times when you see films and you see things that are distracting you with an image and the things that kind of bring it out. So the way you do that is you have to look at, um, I have these things in black and white so it's more, um, so it's more obvious. Now, if you squint your eyes, like just like a, titty, a little bit, you'll kind of see like the white space as dominant. But then you see this woman who is wearing black, and that kind of draws your attention. Let me show you more things. So you have a lot of whites and blacks, but if you squint your eyes, the attention is his face. Now, this is very important key element because you have to be able to draw the attention to the audience of where the story needs to go to. So which is this character. So here's another example where you, know, where you use lights against darks, where this woman, where the, where the sun is coming from, and then casting the building is casting a shadow, but where her head is is actually right where the light um, is, so that you know where to go, right? And also, here's the thing. So I, I have this part of the image on the right side just to kind of show what I'm trying to say, that if you squint your eyes, your attention draws towards the building and the people there, because that's where the story is. Now, uh, this is um, this photographer. He's actually, he started as a musician, and he wanted to bring rhythm into his photos. To bring rhythm, he, he was thinking of, like, you know, when you have music, you have beats, like, done, 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 done. And to establish rhythm within photography, he was thinking of, what if I had a rhythm of dark, light, dark, light? And then he does the same thing on the other side, dark, light, dark, light, dark. So, it, so what I'm trying to show is like you can show a certain rhythm in your, in your photography, in your films, or in your video, just to kind of break things up. So here we're trying to draw attention of light, dark, light, dark. So this alternate rhythm is very eye-catching, and it's also very attention to the face. Now here's a little bit more advanced features, having a rhythm where things are uh, more of diagonals, using shadows. And where the shadows are broken up, you see a light face. So if you, and you kind of wonder, like, where is the direction going to, you see the shadows, and you have these diagonals pointing towards the face, and they're also broken up you know, with, with the face that's lit up. Now, now for you guys, since you guys are more interested in documentary, there are a lot of times when you try to do these um, where you have subjects, and you have to really time it. You have to kind of wait. So here are some moments where if this, if this boy was on this side of the photo, you won't really get that rhythm that we've been trying to establish, right? Now, if, since the photographer, he waited an exact moment for the boy to be right there. And that's where you have an eye-pleasing photo, where you see a rhythm of dark, light, dark. So, and it also draws, uh, draws attention because of the contrast of him being on a white wall, a, a bright wall, and then the kid is really, uh, really dark. So, now here is something of a fail, because you have this subject that has a story, but the subject is right here. Now he's not, he's, he's dark in the image, but you have, if you squint your eyes, there's so much distraction that you can lead towards too. You have a car, that's why you have a sign, you have this guy, but then is the story here? So those are things that, you know, you have to look for of, what can draw away the attention of the viewers of what I'm trying to show? Now you can also use this to, to break a rule of saying like, I don't want to draw attention to one person, I want to draw attention to what's going on that is busy. So, and then here's like another uh, important part, it's like sometimes um, what I like to do is when there's places where it's really dark, I try to look for when the person actually enters from darkness into the light part. So those are things that you have to wait for. Now, let's have something else a little bit more advanced, where you have more characters involved. So here we have three characters, a boy at the water, you have a guy in the foreground, and a, and a person in the middle. So you have an element of 
like I said, like of the, of the lights and the darks, and you have the doorway that's brightest in the scene. Now another way that this photographer is using is he's also using a frame within the frame. He's using the doorway to say like, hey, draw attention to this doorway, saying like, hey, this is important. So those are, these are things of combinations that you can add. So here too, you know, if you squint your eyes again, your subject drives to the image of his hair, of his person, and also through the doorway. So here's another painting of, a, of an example of, you know, like who are the side characters in your story? The painter uses, you know, the brightest part, which is a guy in the foreground on the right, and then he has a, a, a descending order of importance to the story. So you can see like the person on, on the right is the most important and he's also the brightest. And the second person is in the middle and then the person all the way in the back is secondary to the story. Now here you kind of, uh, it's, 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 it's different because you have a hierarchy of also position and hierarchy of, you know, like where they're facing. But, you know, also, you know, if you look at it, the brightest part is this picture because you have you know, you have the, the very bright blue wall. You have him that's mostly lit. You know, but the others, you know, are not as lit. He is, the person on top is actually secondary, and the person in the background is even more secondary. Now, so I'll skip this part, but um, essentially these parts are kind of where photographers think that an image is actually horizontal, or is it actually a portrait photo? where it's vertical. If you look at these photos, you know, you'll have directions of what is dominant. You have a line, which is the grass, and then you have the tree. The difference between those two is that this photo is more of a dominant within the horizontal of a widescreen because the longest line is actually this one. The imaginary line is the tree, but it's not as prominent. So my point is that you guys need to be able to break down a complicated images into lines, into shapes, into objects. Because in our world, we live in a very advanced 3D world, but we have to explain that in a two-dimensional image, right? So here, here we have a lot of verticals and a lot of horizontals. But if you draw in your mind what is actually dominant, you know, if you draw all the lines of their hands, there's actually more horizontals and they're longer, so they cause a, gr a better image. So here, here is a little bit more complicated because you have different, you have verticals, you have slants, you know, and you have horizontals. But if you follow the way of motion of how the image, you have the hor horizon that points to here, you have the ascending or descending of the buildings that points to here, and then you have this vertical. So it all points in the triangle into one spot. And here should be a vertical because of the two that are parallel. And then here's a little bit complicated because you know, like you have this line, but you also have to imagine, you know, lines that you kind of um, shape for yourself. So this should be more strength as a vertical image. And this one's a very powerful image because you know you have a person who's crying. We can also use it as a portrait. So if I was, since we can't really shoot verticals, you know, in a film, how about if you follow the motion of the vertical from when you tilt from up to down, so you can follow the direction of the of the tears, things like that. And here's another complicated one, where we have intersecting lines. You have the heads that are going through. You have the person who is from light to dark to light and then you have um, the verticals of where they're facing, but then the eyes draw attention to this one person. So these are all examples of exactly why our minds think this way. Why do we see things um, as more important that our eye draws attention originally first? So, and then here. Here's a good example of showing motion you know, in a still image. You see the direction of this pipe and it's pointing in this way, but also his eyes are pointing this way, and the fact that you don't have to see his feet to know where he's going. Because he could be walking backwards, he could be walking sideways, you know. But because of, you know, what our eyes sees, we naturally think that he's going forward in that direction. 
The same thing with the illusion of space. You know, we have this, the descending um, um, rail, and then the person's walking that way. And then here is a, a way to enhance depth in the image. So you have this image of Jesus on the cross, but there's so much power in the image because everyone, their motion of their body is pointed towards um, the figure. And then here's like a, of slants, of using parallels. And then here's a way of relationship between what is important, the girl or the guy. And then if you look at the direction of all the stairs and all the places and also where the light is, you see the kid as important. And then here is another image. And then here's another thing. A lot of times you may not have like the best you know, image, but if you look at what's going on, you have the diagonal of the guy, you have the person, but um, this image is where he's going in direction. So you can kind of sense, you know, like where is the best way to, to frame it. So here's a little bit more advanced. You know, it's not all about lines and, and squares and, and dots. You know, it's also curves. You have the direction of, of her looking towards her, and then, sh and then we have this curve of her. So kind of it guides us you know, in the story where, you know, like, they're, they're concerned about this child, so. And the same thing with here. You have, um, you have curves where they're all going into this direction. All of these curves point towards this way. Now, there's also um, S-curves. Another S-curve. Now, S-curves are very good for showing really great depth because you can tell the sense of the direction from the background, from the middle ground, and to the foreground. So you can s kind of have your eyes guide towards all the way down. Same thing with here. Because of this S-curve, you can see how, like, how expansive you know, this line is. And even though if you look, you know, we look at it this way, and it feels like they're going this direction, but they're actually all mostly pointing this way. It's just our eyes are fooling ourselves of which, you know, which direction it's going. Same thing with the, the books. So, and then here's another one, radiating lines. So this is another technique um, that you'll see in, even in Kubrick films, where you have things that are radiating. So it kind of creates like a, a sort of pattern where it draws in to here. I like to look at radiating lines also as leading lines, where it leads you from a point where you use these lines of all the people lined up and it kind of like expands. So it, it, it kind of draws an illusion as if this radiating line will go on forever. And then right here, you have a, a radiated from a common point where all these kids are reaching out to this one hand that is the giver of food for the hungry. So it creates a certain power that like this is the source of our you know, of our, of our income, the source of our, you know, of our food, the source of all the things. Okay, and this, I this image is interesting uh, because uh, one, the guy's holding a knife, but two, um, what's interesting about it is that, uh, I, remember I remember reading about this where Da Vinci, um, he says like never have a person, to have a person that's motion and moving, don't have, don't shoot a, or don't paint a person where their head and their chest is pointing towards the same way. If you change their angle, then you create a certain motion as if like they're, they're in movement, as if they're turning, as if they're you know, going in a certain direction. So like when you take photos at your school, you know, when the person's like telling you like left, right, boom, boom, because it creates a better image. And Da Vinci says that um, you know, an image like that is because that's the same way it, the direction of a corpse looks the same as their head and their chest the same way. So it creates a dead image. So, things like that. Now, here's some common, uh, here's some examples of modern movies today. Um, this is from the latest, uh, not the Avengers movie, but Captain America, number two, was it? Winter Soldier, there you go. So here's the use of a frame with a frame. You have the dark space, and then it points it towards the light. Here's another one of motion, like a rotation motion. So it's as if, like, he just defeated all these guys and now they're kind of pointed towards this direction. So that tried to circle him, but pretty much wasn't very helpful because Captain America is awesome. So 
Now you have these horizontal lines, so this creates a beautiful um, horizontal image and using the, um, um, these lines. And then you have radiating lines using um, light. And then you have the center of, of the person, which is the fox. This is from uh, what was it? Guardians of the Galaxy, another good movie. And then, so we have light, dark light. We have radiating lines that, that kind of goes to a point. And then here's another one, frame within frame, using silhouettes, using dark light, dark light. And then here's uh, from a movie. Um, I had, had notes that showed me what movie this is. But I think this was like a 2014 film. Um, I believe, I know it's European, so it's an international film. But you can see, like, you know, he is on the light part on the wall, and then he's dark. So it draws you attention. And I love this frame. You have a frame within the frame within the frame, right? So you can go crazy with it. And it just draws you attention. Like, you have this guy you know, who is who's there, and then you have this guy who's looking at him. So it kind of it creates a relationship of like, who, what, what am I trying to show? What is the relationship what I'm trying to show? Like, you could show that because he's in a different frame, he's in a different world looking in. And because he is in the biggest frame, it seems like he has a bigger problem because he's in the biggest frame, and that he's looking out because there's something that he wants and that's a solution. And then him, he could be trying to figure out, like, what does he want because I don't understand him because I'm part of another frame. So those are, like, the relationships that you can, they can build. And then here, you know, this is, like, a, a confusing image. But here, you know, they use the, the floor to kind of brighten it up just to say, like, hey, pay attention to this guy at the end of the table. Right here is the use of lines, of diagonal lines. And if you look at it, they all point towards this way, so even though you have all this white space, but your eyes draws attention naturally to these two characters because of using of diagonal lines. Here is an awesome image where you have kind of a radi radiating lines where they all point towards here, and they point towards this window. So it's like, and the window, if you squint your eyes, that's the most brightest in the frame. Here you have also, you have leading lines that lead towards here. And then you have him on the white wall, and then you have him on this on uh, this building, and then you have him framed up. So, and then you have space in between them. So there could be another story there. And here I like this image because it has like a silhouette, but it's also breaking. So you can tell a lot of times when you when you do silhouettes, um, like if you if you watch uh, Gone with the Wind. There's, a, there's, a, there's an image that's very drastic where you don't have to see their face, but you can see the actions of their body. And that's where you want to kind of show like a bigger spectrum that there is something, there's something like they're a dark figure, you know, in, in, um, in a really big world, like a really small figure. So those are ways to do that. And here you have the frame. It doesn't have to be a box, but it could be, you know, an arc. And then right here, so you have this guy who's on the green. So I, I, I like to point out this film because it has a lot of, you know, motions of color. And then you have this brightest part. So you have like a relationship between what is green. And then um, I believe when you see green, it, it has like a, a tone of like uncomfortable and like kind of a plain everyday life. So kind of like a bathroom where it has like fluorescent lighting. So it's kind of like a, it feels a very, um, very drab. And then you have, you know, him in this light, you know, where he is, you know, it seems like he is um, kind of, uh, seems like everything is pointed towards him as if he's been looking down upon or something like that. So very open for uh, interpretation. And in here, you have the same image but you're using color to kind of create an ascending motion towards this way of the color. So you kind of like, because the author or the, the director could have chosen like, hey, let's just have all these image the same color. But instead, he creates a sort of descending motion to do that. And then right here, too. And then if, like, if you look, you know, like the tension is here. But I feel like this movie has a lot of 
of a reflection of, of, of a, kind of like a, he sees himself as a, either a duality or sees himself as like something that's not of him. So that's why he has a different representation of his face or image. So uh, let's see. And here you have this going down towards her. You have a horizontal line. And then here, um, you can't really see it, but there's this, there's this guy who's this dark figure. But then she's leading, she's leading her into her room. So it's kind of like it creates a sort of direction of you know, seduction. You have the color red, which is passion. And then you have here, where it seems kind of dull. And then, and then also your eyes draws your attention to the bathroom. So there's, there's, there's some sort of story there. You know, like maybe there's a way that there's always a way out. Maybe he's trying to show a direction of, like, maybe, you know, we should, you know, maybe they should go to the bathroom. Things like that. Those are, those are the relationships that you guys have, you know, with these tools. Oops. And then, um, you can't really see it, but there's also this guy right here. He's looking down, and then there's this TV, which is the same character. And then you have these pews right here that are lit. So it's kind of like a heavenly place, but also a dark place. And then... You have the frame within the frame. So yeah, this is a very confusing film, you know. But they use a lot of like visual um, aesthetics to kind of like to kind of like uh, make you feel and emotions. So like he he comes out of the bathroom, he's looking out. You know, you have these stalls, but they don't really have like uh, not stalls, but they don't really have anything in it. So it's very I haven't seen the movie, but it's very interesting. Now, then you have this emotion right here. Um, so like for me, you have like a, all of this is going down here. All this is pointing towards this way. And then it kind of, and then you have the shadow pointed that way. So it's kind of like, it's, it seems like he's been in there for a long time. You know, he's been in there. He's like, he feels like he's in the corner. You have this very um, high angle shot right here. Um, we're able to use the direction of the lines just to point in here and the frame within the frame. Right here, um, yeah, there's, there's like two stories. He's like really bright, and then you have this TV. So, and then like uh, he's, you can't really see it, but he's actually, um, um, what do you call it? Handcuffed. There you go. Thank you. And then you have like this bright image, and then you have this guy right here in the, in the side. So it's like, and then here you have nature pointing out towards him. You have the flowers pointing out towards him, so you draw the attention. So in your, in your documentaries, you can use objects to kind of like, you know, you have, if there's a toy or a doll, or have objects that face him, you know? So it kind of it feels as if we're part of the audience. This is from the movie Transcendence. So when I, when I, when I watch this film, um, it's a very, the, 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 the director was uh, Christopher Nolan's DP, and it's a, very, it's a very visual movie, but it lacked story. So, um, so yeah, so you have the color of the green to kind of make you feel like uncomfortable, and then you have the line right here, which is the brightest part, to show like, you know, the platform. And then you have, you know, the, the, this right here, the platform to draw attention. And you have this image where it kind of frames within her, and um, also the person on the bed. And then you have Johnny Depp within the frame. But then if you notice that, because in this scene he's very uncomfortable, so you actually even have the, the bar behind him that kind of shows his uncomfortableness in a dark world. And then here I love it because you, know, you, have, you, know, you show a relationship you know, where she enters in, but she doesn't expect something complete. She has broken up mirrors that are not showing all the mirrors, or not all the, all the windows, to kind of show that she's entering into a world where things are not together, things are not in place, things are out of place. And in here, you know, um, it's a wide shot, but you can show, like, you, can sh you see the lights, and they show a really great way to show depth. This is like, closer to us. This is in the middle. This is the farthest away from us. So, because if you eliminate these, then you just think that, you know, it's, it feels like a small room. 
but because of the way the director chose it, so it feels even more broken up. Right here too, so we have you know light, dark, light, dark, and also you have the frame. And then here you have the reading lines, leading lines that lead to the lead to that direction. And here you have a great horizontal image because of the lens flare. And then here you have super frames and also uh, you know where the where everything's going. And here, um, I think this is important because a lot of times, why do why do people wear a black suit? People wear a black suit. It looks nice. It looks great. Oh, sorry. Um, it looks it looks nice. It looks great. But when you wear a black suit, the thing that you notice is the face because that's the most lit. So it draws attention to like, hey, um, you know, I need you to to look at me. I need you to pay attention to me. So that's when you wear a black suit, it actually does better than a white suit. Because then you're like, oh, okay, look at the fashion, look at you know, what the person's wearing, but rather than looking at the person's face, right? Oops. Here's an interesting image where you have kind of like a, an ascending of, of light where you have the window, you have the shirt, and then you have the pillow. So it kind of shows a, kind of like a she's dead and then she's laying to rest, you know, as the pillow kind of shows. I like this image too, same, same movie, Transcendence, where you have light, dark light, so and it has like a motion where it goes in. And then also you can see you have a huge open space where they're looking at, but also this line directs it towards here, towards the center point. And then you have Johnny Depp, and then that concludes that.